Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 329. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the uh, commercial version of Google Plus um, on the SEO Questions community uh, and also uh, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Tim Kapper. Uh, Tim uh, is CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. Uh, he's also a Google product expert uh, in the uh, Google My Business community. Uh, Tim uh, is based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. David Rosam uh, is also based in the UK, uh, but on the uh, um, Lower side. <laughs> um, well, I think the word is it. a leading <laughs> internet marketer. Uh, he's based in West Sussex. Uh, David um, it can be found. Oh, Tim can be found at onlineownership.com. David can be found at writingforco.org and uh, davidrosam.com. Right, we have. Uh, 13 questions tonight. Um, let's uh, look at the first of them. It's titled, I use SVG for most of my images. It's from Cynthia Oliveira. And Cynthia said, hi, everyone. Would it be a problem if I used most of the images in my site as .svg? Um, as they are a lot lighter than a photo. For example, would it compromise the loading time? Um, not sure about the lot light of the photo. Uh, .svg better for vector images. Um, .jpg, um, .jpg better for photos generally. Um, so it depends what you're doing um, as to which format you use. That's it. Yeah. By the way, I must point out uh, people like Michael Martinez uh, um, and uh, Dave Elliott and um, others who answer questions uh, on our uh, Facebook group through the week. Um, their assistance is invaluable. Um, and we are truly grateful. Um, all right. Well, I'm, I'm no just a bit concerned. This will move on. I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned. Like, uh, uh, Cynt, is that Cynthia? However you pronounce that. She says her image is optimized around 200 to 300K. Jeep has wept. Um, well, that's, that's massive. Um, here, here's one for you to try, uh, Cynthia, in optimizing, uh, you know, an image. Chuck it into Squoosh, S-Q-U-O-O-S-H. That's an image optimization tool by Google. Um, I guarantee you, you're chucking a 200K image, you know, even or even a, a thousand, you know, like, yeah, you drop that in, you, you know, you'll be able to reduce that massively. Um, but give it a try. It's a great little tool. It's free also. Thank you, Tim. All right, let's go to the next. This one from AJM Verma, titled Cased Version of the Page Returns an Error. Um, AJ said, does anyone have an answer to this weird issue? One site, domain.com says that the pages are well indexed but if i try to check the last cached version of the page it returns an error a two every time i do site domain.com it shows a different number of pages indexed um, for some and three for some pages when checking the last cache works um, but it shows a different version of the page each time 
Can you please tell me what's going on with my new website? Okay, so first off, a site query is not always going to give you um, the exact number of pages in the site. So, yeah, just forget about that straight away. If you want to, you know, um, that's definitely not going to show you all of them. Um, the cache, if you look at cache, it says it's in there, you look at it, and then it gives you a 404 on the thing. Um, Guru returns a 404. Uh, that had a massive problem recently um, uh, with de indexed, de indexed pages. So I would rather use Search Console if you want to actually check if you're, well, I mean, firstly, if you can see it in Search, it's indexed. Um, but if you wanted to double check it, you can chuck it into your Search Console into check the individual URL and that'll give you the information you're looking at but like i said there was a big problem uh with google and in fact i think i think i saw an update if it was today or a couple of days ago from barry schwartz who's tracking this a little bit um and it seems that it's actually getting worse rather than better at the minute so you know yeah but i, I um yeah, so yeah, well, that's, that's pretty much it. Thank you, Tim. Or do, do you think, guys, it might have anything to do with, I mean, it, it, it stems from Google, it doesn't do everything um, in one go, like it, it will. Uh, crawl the, the site to pick up the page and then it'll come back to check the page um and and so on do you think that's a possibility that that's, that's why he's seeing different uh, pages maybe i shouldn't have asked i don't know it could be but the site query even google says you shouldn't be using to see if you know it just does not return all pages in the site yeah Okay, well, let's go to number three on our run list. It's from Cassie Richardson. It's titled um, Domain Properties uh, in the new Google Search Console. Cassie said two questions related to Google Search Console. The, the first one is general and the second one is situational. One, uh, I, I understand that um, uh, Google rolled out domain properties in the new Google Search Con Console. I've not used this yet, um, but um, plan to in the future. Does anyone know if there's still a need to set up a preferred domain? Uh, do you know if it's still recommended to set up multiple properties for all versions of the site? Uh, if the only subdomains or domain variants that exist are HTTPS versus HTTP and www versus non www can you only set up set a domain property um, view uh, everything uh, in there and not have to, to worry about telling Google Search Console which version is preferred? Sorry, I can't find a good resource right now. Two, I was recently tasked with looking at someone's Google Search Console. Right now, that there are two properties: one for HTTPS dub 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 and one for HTTP, dub, dub, dub. So both are dub, 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 but one is secure and one is not. The site resolves to HTTPS, uh, dub, 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 and there is no domain property set up. When I go into both properties, performance data is split between the two. The XML sitemap was submitted in the non-secure version, um, which obviously needs to be changed. However, since the preferred domain setting only tells Google Search Console, dub, dub, dub versus non dub, 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 is there anything else I need to do to make sure that HTTPS dub, dub, dub has all insights and HTTP has nothing? The switch to HTTPS uh, 
was done a long time ago. Redirects are good, etc. I know that I could most likely set up a domain property and see combined data there. But since there is a clear reporting issue, I don't want to do that right now. Whew. Did I send you to sleep, guys? Oh, you stopped. <laughs> um well no I, sorry i i don't um i don't know about this uh i haven't even looked um didn't even know if they were doing something new um so no let me just check out what michael said but i would still but i would still person i mean look i haven't looked at it so i i don't know but um, I, I would, at the minute, I would still personally have one for the HD, to HTTPS, HTTP and HTTPS. That would just, you know, make sense. Of course, you're going to have split data. Uh, you say all the redirects are up, but has um, every single one of the HTTP, you know, versions come down? Um, what about any uh, links that were ever linked to the HTTP site? You know, you can you can still you know th those kind of things. So you can still see, um, you know, it's still interesting to 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 keep an eye on that. Um, if it's a brand new site, you know, that's just gone live. It's on the non www version. I would never need to set up a search console for the for the for the www version. Um, that's because it never would have ever existed. Never ever have been linked to. Never. You, you, do you see what I mean? But in terms of this new one. So, sorry, I don't know. I haven't had a play with it yet. So I don't know. Thank you, Tim. Okay, let's go to number four in our run list from Jay Lowe. Um, how to prevent regional pages ranked on other regions. Um, Yeah, okay, I think I know what he means. He, anyway, he, he goes on to say, how to prevent regional pages ranked on other region search engine results page while we don't have the equivalent page on that region. For example, if, if I have an en-ca page, www.example.com slash en-ca slash pizza, specifically for users in Canada, and I don't have a en-us page how can i prevent www.example.com slash en-ca slash pizza ranking on a us search engine results page i mean if i if i do have a, a an en.us page i can use hreflink to uh, establish uh, the relationship so the EN US page will show up in the US search engine results page instead. But in case I don't have an EN.US page, what should I do? Thank you, guys. So it's exact, exactly what Dave, um, you know, Dave said. Uh, you can't tell Google not to show a result which they think you know is relevant in a different in a, in a different region correctly or incorrectly like like you've said in the conversation yes but it's a bad user experience but that's for Google to decide um, <laughs> you know it's yeah, uh, um, if you have the correct region, if you have a correct regional page and Google is showing an incorrect regional page, then that's a slightly different story. You need to understand why a particular region's page is being displayed in the incorrect region search query. Could it be how your page is actually set up? Could it be how it's optimized? 
Could it be uh, an internal linking issue uh, from content created that's linked to a particular one when it should have been going to a different regional page? Um, could, uh, I'm assuming it's all English, so I'm not even going to say H, could it be HFLAN? Um, could it be, if I'm assuming if it's in a region, does it have a GMB page? Is Have you somehow incorrectly linked to that? Um, things like that. But, so, so then that's another issue. But if you have a regional page that's being displayed in a region that you don't have a regional page for, unfortunately, there's very little you can do there. That seems to be a Google issue rather than an incorrect page that you do have not showing over and above another page. That seems more likely an internal issue, uh, but, uh, possibly structural uh, or internal that you've misappropriated or you've incorrectly either linked to from other content or in the site structure or there's something not quite, you know, where Google is, you can see it, but they want to just, they want to rank your other page. Um, then I would start looking at the actual pages themselves on a page by page basis, especially on those two the one that should be ranking, but that isn't ranking, and the one that is ranking that shouldn't be ranking. Uh, and I would look at those and follow them, follow down the rabbit hole. Thank you, Tim. By the way, guys, um, do a Google search for how many legs does a goat have? Some, a group of wags are, are playing around with, um, um google's um um scraping and uh, providing answers and and they're really coming unstuck hmm. all right let's um go to the next if i can find my mouse all right, Michelle Korn asked a question. It's titled URL not in sitemap. She goes on to say, so after finally getting my site on Google Search Console, I'm being indexed when I write new posts, but why is it saying that the URL is not in my sitemap? And she gives a, a, a link, um, which can be seen on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, I, can I jump in and answer that, guys? Um, mm -hmm. Possibly because uh, um, you haven't uh, recreated your sitemap um, on adding a new post. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, if, if you're using something like Yoast, uh, it automatically up updates the sitemap um, as data is added. I, I think that's right. Um, it depends on how your sitemap is created, Michelle. Uh, um, but um, yeah, it, it, if you recreate your sitemap, I'm sure it'll be seen. Keep in mind that Google is not real time. It could 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 be. Uh, you might have to wait a week to see the the, the message change. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. All right, let's go to the next. Matthias Pantalonius, uh, who we haven't heard from for a while, asked a question. <laughs> Tracking search engine result pages, click-through ratio, history. Matthias wants to know, are there any new sleek new apps out there for tracking search engine results pages? Um, click-through ratio history, or am I still better off rolling my own solution with Excel and Google Search Console? We somehow didn't pick up um, the um, comments on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group, but uh, I think somebody mentioned uh, SEMrush and 
and then Matthias said, um, we're in SEMrush, and I meant to answer it because nobody else did, and I'll go back later and edit. Once I figure it out for myself, because I don't track CTR. Neither do I. Maybe I should. Yep. All right. Um, Zawar Kamal asks the number seven on our run list, the internal linking strategy. So when I said, I just purchased Screaming Frog and I was checking in the visualizations but can't properly understand them. Does anyone have a sample graph that shows the best internal linking strategy? My website structure is somewhat like a few blogs uh, and a few service pages. What's the best way to organize my site structure? Um, sorry, just a quick one. Um, but, 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 uh, let me find him. Um, if you want to know about internal, you know, because you're also asking about graphs and that. Oh, Jesus, what's his name? Um, no, sorry, I'm going to try and find. Um, he's pretty much like he obviously publishes a lot of stuff, but he's also got stuff on his site. Um, Is the name completely gone out of my brain? Sorry, I can't. Well, the, look, the message I'd want to give to Zoa is that it. You can't nose ring people. You can try. You, you can try to nose ring them, but um, I think on every page that they they land on, you know, you have a contact form uh, on um, every service page, um, but you expect them to go and look for the contact form. You still want them to read the blog post, but then that you want expect them to navigate to the service page related to that blog post, and afterwards uh, they can contact us. It's 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 not like that. You you can't. Um, well, you you you'll get maybe one in a hundred um, doing what you want, but the rest will be gone. Um, if you want people to contact you, then put your contact form on every page, including your blog posts. Make it easy for them on your blog posts uh, um, to navigate to the surf service page. Um, but um, yeah, uh, I, I think Michael Martin is um, gave a, a much better answer than I can. Um, so, so look, you know, if a person lands on your blog page, right, and you've in in that in that article, you've either linked to, you know, like where it says, I don't know, X Y Z services, um, like we provide, blah blah blah, and you link through to that. That's good practice. But also think of a, you know, a, an actual um, a call to action down the right hand side or the left hand side of the article. 
after that, literally your content, whatever you've written, needs to ultimately lead them to actually wanting to. Now, there's also pieces of content, you must remember, that sometimes people won't. This, unfortunately, that's a fact of life. People want to, you know, a lot of the time they'll come in, they'll read it um, out of curiosity, more out of interest. They're not actually in a purchasing funnel yet or whatever and, and not go through, you know. But as long as you've either linked to that service page within the content, which is which is obviously good, but also think about creating a unique uh, call to action on that, uh, et cetera. Now, the one I was uh, looking at, because uh, it's called IQ SEO. Uh, the guy's name is Andy Drinkwater. Uh, on his side, he does do a lot of stuff on internal linking, things like this, and images, like because you said you wanted, a, um, uh, you know, uh, images. And in different um, articles he writes, he does show different things. So there you go. I finally found it for you. Thank you, Tim. All right, will we move on from this one? Okay, number eight on our run list from Mark Aaron Francisco. How do you guys rank for low competition keywords? From what sites do you usually get your backlinks? My flippant answer is number one. We could tell you, but then we would have to kill you. <laughs> um, How do you guys rank for low competition keywords? I'm number just, one. If it's... <laughs> if it, fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Look, okay, so Mark, just, just ignore David. <laughs> I didn't even get what he was saying because my brain's frazzled today. It's month end. <laughs> okay. So, and I'm, you know, if, you, if it's month end for you also, Mark, you probably also freaking don't get what he's going on about because all of our brains are frazzled at the minute. Anyway, right. So, Mark, it all depends on the, the you know, the, the site itself, you know, on what you've done, you know, is it new? But essentially, if it's a low competition keyword, um, typically, and depending, and so so this varies. It depends on what what it is. But if it's if it's a, a low competition keyword, or even a fairly moderate one, a well written. So you've got to decide whether how you would best want to hit that keyword. Would it be an actual um, on page? Uh, sorry, on-site, like, dedicated page? Or um, would it make more sense as a blog article? So it's kind of you choose. But essentially, you know, I mean, I do it all the time in, in terms of, like, for example, like, Search, search Console. Um, and, and and basically, the way, the, the way you look at it is, is, you know, as a site naturally develops, as the client or, or, you know, the company is building content, you know, is adding content and new products and things like that. You always see new things coming into the fold in, for example, Search Console or whatever tool you're using. But I, I say Search Console because that's, you know, like free, right? And it's available to everyone. Um, and when you start seeing these things pop up, like, yes, it might be on page five, uh, but it, you already you start seeing some some unique little queries around that. So you can either do it in two ways. When you say low competition, I I would literally work out um, you know, and let's say it was an article, I would just write um, you know, an in, sort of an article on that, and literally target that specific thing. You could either do it in a how-to or a where or whatever or a guide or whatever the case may be direct them through to the service or the product and boom, you know, pretty much if there's low competition, you, you, once that's your number one anyway, or number two, or you could target that with an actual specific uh, on-site, you know, with it, within that niche, within that genre, you could target that. If it's a little bit more, 
you know, it's sort of got a little bit more depth to it and volume to it. So when I say depth and volume is it actually may have a few uh, different variations of it. It might be, you know, uh, I'm just going to say, for example, let's say, um, you know, a, a toothbrush, for example. Like, let's say it's a, I don't know, a whatever brand toothbrush. Um, now, obviously, that's massive, but I'm just using an example. And when I say a little bit of depth to it, you could have, and if you're probably, you, you could do a comparison, which is, you know, compare this toothbrush to that toothbrush. You could do then how to properly maintain, um, you know, or how to properly use this product. Um, what is the difference between, so you would essentially create two or three articles around that, um, each obviously targeting a slightly different thing, but each targeting ultimately that particular keyword. So firstly, the thing is, is identify what you want to do. Is this going to be an actual on-site page uh, or am I going to target it via an article? And is there, can it be a little bit more in depth? Can I provide a little bit more information into that or, or not, you know, or is it just one good guide piece? And when I mean guide, it doesn't necessarily have to be a written article. So for example, I, I, and I don't know what you're particularly into, but um, uh, another example would be, let's say it's a very boring kind of uh, an e-commerce site. Like, um, I mean, I've got a particular client in mind, which is like literally, you know, different different ball bearings, sizes from, from one mil to, and like the millions of different freaking ball bearings. But there are different densities and weights and things like this. And essentially I was like, well, how am I going to do this? Because this is so freaking boring, but how can I segment it? Because everything is essentially a ball bearing, but there are literally tons of queries and it's low hanging fruit, low competition. So then we just segmented them out, you know, into different guides um, on site, actual guides, very technical ones, but they literally then segment out each one. So it's pulling different little, you know, clustering them, uh, uh, so to say. And they, because there was hardly any competition, they were ranking almost instantly. Um, and those were by creating guides out of them. So it all depends on looking at it and then deciding well, which way you want to go. And it's just get it on site. And that's literally how you target it. I mean, there's, it's not rocket science to this, uh, but of course it needs to be done pretty well because you still ultimately want that user to perform an action, whether they are clicking for um, more information or sign up for an email or click through to the actual product page or the contact page or whatever. So you, you still, you need to do it well, uh, that hopefully will convert the user but yeah just get it on get it on site it's just figuring out which way to do it thank you tim yeah just to agree with tim concentrate on uh creating content don't uh, don't get caught up with uh buying tons of backlinks uh you, your backlinks will come um so yes get get Spend your time, spend your your money on content. Um, that, that's it. Okay. Number nine on our run list uh, is from AJM Verma. It's titled A Safe Way to Delete Pages. Uh, he said, I deleted a few pages on my site that were already indexed. None of them were getting any traffic, had any backlinks, or have uh, any internal links pointing to them. Um, is it um, necessary to 301 them to a similar page or home page, or just deleting them is enough? Thanks. Um, in theory, in theory, 301 in is uh, is what you do in practice if uh, you haven't got any links and they're not getting any traffic um i would just delete them and not fiddle about 
um, if uh, if you're not getting any traffic, uh, then you're not going to upset anyone by by four oh fouring. End of. Yeah, fair enough. I was just reading um, Cordy Remner's um, comment. Um, Yeah, okay. Uh, anything more on this one? Okay. Number 10 on our run list from our good friend JL Faveria. Um, fixing weird URLs. Um, what could cause this and what would you recommend to fix it? I see a page, example, https, uh, example.com, slash example dash page, uh, also shows up with the following URLs, https, slash example.com, slash uh, example dash page. Uh, um, <clears throat> oh, page, slash page, slash two, slash question mark, uh, S. Um, etc. Um, that's it. That's the question. I think it was that was well answered by uh, um, Michael, but Ed Martin was there first. Technically, he's brilliant. Um, he said that, that the question mark S fragment is used to indicate a search results sequence in some CMSs. Uh, um, in WordPress, that would result in a page description looking like this, some number search results for. So lucky to have people of the caliber of Michael Stricker, Michael Martinez, Edita Martin, um, answering our questions through the week. Well, let's call that an answer. And um, we'll go to number 11 on our run list. Another one from AJM Verma. Are backlinks, reviews, and citations mutually exclusive? AJ said, as far as I know, backlinks, backlinks help to rank your website and reviews and citations help to rank your Google My Business listing. Are the two properties mutually exclusive? What I want to know is that it, is it possible to rank your website locally without working on the Google My Business uh, property. Yeah, so you, they, they both work off different algos. They're comp two completely separate platforms. Yeah, you can rank your website, but uh, if it's a local, local thing, you, you get far more clicks through on the GMB or the, the, the local pack assuming there is a local pack for that particular local search query. Um, so yeah, you can, you can do that, but as long as you realize that ranking position number one below the entire three pack is going to pr produce far less results than if you were in the three pack. Um, so yeah, you know, I would, uh, you, you, yeah, you can do either or. You can work, but essentially, you should typically be working on on both. Um, and equally, you can be in the three pack and not even on page one uh, organically. So, you know, the, the, in an ideal world, you'd work on both. Um, I think you'd, you'd work on both. 
And so you're in the three pack as well as organic, and therefore you're getting majority of your stuff coming from uh, GMB. And then if somebody does happen to want to actually scroll down and look at search results, uh, organic search results, you're, you're in with the chance there of also getting a click. So, um, you know, personally, I'd work on both. But if I had to choose based on what I know, so organic versus a search query that has a, that has an actual three pack showing, uh, three pack would win my my time every time. Um, yeah, but you know, those three packs aren't don't always display for queries, um, and in which case you would need to be obviously showing organically. But uh, why not just work on both? It's it, you know it's combined anyway, um, and. To say where, like citations aren't just for GMB, uh, citations are also for your organic, because organically search, the search query is Google needs to understand, Google search needs to understand where you're physically located versus when somebody searches a search query, uh, you know, X query in X area, then, the, then, 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 then Google Bart goes, okay, I've found a page here that deals with that, and I've found a page, uh, all right, oh yeah, they're there, they're in that area, and boom, I'm going to start putting you into the organic. So it's it's not like, just so you're aware, citations on for GMB. Essentially, you don't even link to the GMB, so why would they benefit the GMB? It is, it is all organic, but it's also both algos try and figure out who's been mentioned, what area, what location, more prominently, what seems popular, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. Thank you, Tim. All right, uh, uh, that's that's a, a good answer for AJ. Uh, let's uh, move on from that, unless David wants to jump in. No? Okay. All right, this one from Siam Sul Quoma. Um, it's titled, My Blog Gets a High Bounce Rate. Um, Siam Sul uh, asked, he said, please uh, help me to solve this problem. For the last three years, my blog has had a high bounce rate and a short session duration. Um, it is impossible. I think visitors read my post for more than one minute, not one second. If I can jump in there, guys, I, I think Michael Martinez gave a uh, great answer. Um, we should staple this one to the wall, I think. Um, yeah, he said bounce rate is not a very useful metric. Probably could have stopped there. Um, but anyway. anyway um, he, he said you're not filtering out um, um, bots. Could be site configuration. All right, let's move on from that. Um, so I'm still um, my. my uh, response to you would be to read Michael Martinez's uh, answer. Um, it would, um, it'll save you a whole lot of time as well as uh, um, heading you in the right direction. Right, our last question tonight is from Neil Cheeseman. Um, it's titled Category Names and Breadcrumbs. Um, he said, with an established website with hundreds of posts in this category, 2000 plus, um, looking to improve rankings for London theatre reviews um, with 50 plus authors. The question is, um, would the category name be better as reviews, theatre reviews, or is it best as London theatre reviews, as is? The reviews are 99% reviews on productions in London. Uh, any suggestions on best practice? The category is also in the main navigation menu.
Mm, yeah, I don't, yeah. The thing is, if it's in the... Yeah, because if you... So, yeah... Hmm. So in the navigation, I'd probably call it theatre reviews. But on page, you know, you said they're all in London, then you could add theatre reviews, you know, across, across London or in London. But in the nav, it's going to look a bit, you know, it's three words. It kind of, you know, they in the breadcrumbs. It, 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 yeah. I'd probably go with theatre reviews in the breadcrumbs and then just have obviously in London on page. Um, yeah, yeah, something like that. Thank you, Tim. Do you want to add anything, David? It is the last question. I'm just trying to think this through. Um, I, I can see the the argument for um, not having London theatre reviews in the uh, main nav. It's a bit uh, clumsy, but it also depends on how the how the website works. Is this a um, is is this um, a London tourist type guide? I think it. I think it. No, they sell tickets. I think it is all London. It's just literally London, I, I believe. Okay. Uh, and they do tickets, so they'll have. Uh, if I'm correct, they'll have like, you know, what's going on in this area, what's going on in London, theatre tickets, different shows, you know, in London. Uh, I believe it is just London. Okay, so. Um, the Londonness doesn't need to be injected at the theatre reviews. Um, level, um, it could start getting a bit spammy if you start putting redundant Londons all over the place. Um, so I'm not sure that um, going with uh, with that in the uh, in the nav and in the category names. Um, but there's an awful lot of content there. Does that mean there's a, a lot of awful content there? How well is the content working for you? It's going to be tough, isn't it? There's going to be a lot of uh, uh, a lot of competition for these things. Um, so, you know, may, maybe you've just got to got to say this is going to be tough. Um, and if you're not ranking for it, and you really have got some good content, then you're going to have to go down towards a long, longer tail and find more specific targets than uh, London theatre reviews. It's difficult without seeing the site, but not, you know, it does, it just sounds to me that this, this is going to be one hell of a target, uh, one hell of a key phrase to target. And you might be better off um, chunking it a bit. Yeah, he's, he's very, good with his site uh, neil cheeseman he's um, asked a lot of questions of us and you can tell from the questions he's asking uh, uh, how much effort he's putting into it mm. so i think you can back him in all right uh, let's um click this button and yes it is a thank you for watching time we've done it again we've answered all of the questions asked on the seo questions community uh, in the commercial area of Google, Google Plus, and um, also on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. I'd like to thank uh, Tim Kappa and David Roseanne for their contributions tonight, and also uh, Michael Martinez, uh, Michael Stricker, Dave Elliott, and, and so many others who um contributed answers uh, to questions as they were asked on the Damasio questions facebook group we'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again um but for now it's um good night and uh, thank you very much <laughs>